Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker. And today we are unboxing and reviewing the third month of the Knit Picks Crochet Lovers box. Um, so just to recap, month one we got Kotlin and dishcloth pattern. Month two, we got six balls of the Glimmer Stroll and a shawl pattern or scarf pattern. This is the dishcloth pattern. This month, our box included, hopefully I'm not hitting that stand too much, two hanks of the Hawthorne fingering weight. And these are 80% superwash fine highlands wool with 20% polymide, 354 yards, fingering weight, 100 grams. Size one, this is machine wash gentle, tumble dry low. I, I am not a huge oranges person, but how gorgeous is that? I mean, that is just, this one, the tonal is just not going to show up nearly as much. Um, this one is Lovejoy, and this one is Klamath Falls. But it's far more tonal and interesting than what it looks like. I, in the camera, it kind of just looks like navy yarn. Yeah, maybe you're seeing some of that, but it's just so pretty. But this one... I, it's sunset to me. This is, this is what you expect a Miami sunset to look like. The little bit of purpley browns with the, the bright shots of yellow in it. I love the colors. And the pattern for this one is a shawl pattern. And it is a, I told y'all uh, we'd come back to the concept of the fade and my love of fade patterns when I did my show and tell video, but that is the shawl pattern that came with it. And clearly they're using different color yarns, but you can see the overlap in the color there. This is it out flat. So it's a very, um, it's a more abrupt fade. I like the pattern quite a bit. I'm not 100% sold that these two colors are necessarily the best for it. But um, I did open this yesterday and I did go ahead and run my math and my numbers for this because once again, I am already familiar with Knit Picks quality and I've never had an issue with the quality of Knit Picks yarn. So Hawthorne is another yarn I have used. I have now used Everything I've, I have gotten either as part of the project or I've used it prior. Um, all in all, I'm happy with what I got. I got things that I genuinely like but might not have necessarily purchased for myself. Um, the breakdown on this box, those Hawthorne yarns go for $12.99 each. The pattern is $4.99, so the total value in this box is $30.97. Um, there are two ways to order the subscription box. You can do a three month subscription, which is equals to $25 a month or a month by month, which is $27 a month. So on the surface, it doesn't feel like you're getting that much of a discount on the items. Um, the first month, the total value of the box was $32.00. The second month, my total retail value was $35.94. This month, the total retail value is $30.97. So uh, you're guaranteed a $30 value in each box. We have had some that are a little bit higher, a little bit lower. There is some variation. Uh, I am considering continuing this for another three months because I feel like you cheapen the experience by getting the same thing, but I kind of also want to try some of their knitting boxes and see what you get with that as well. Um, but they've been, they, they have been true to their promise. Each box has been a $30 value. Um, this month, 
If you got the month by month for $27, you got a 13% discount, which is not that great. But if you did the three month, which is what I did, it's a 19% difference. Uh, I've said it before. I think most of us have the expectation, if you're doing a subscription box, you expect at minimum a 15% discount on the items that you're from the retail price of what you're getting. You expect a reasonable sale. It doesn't have to be 50% off. It doesn't have to be clearance, but we are at least expecting a certain percentage off. Um, Knit Crate does that generally with their two skein crates. Uh, if you go to an OIS, Hanks like that tend to be 20 to $36 a piece. If you're paying $25 a month, you're really getting about a 40 to 50% discount. Um, some of the single skein months have been a little bit more towards the 10 to 20% off zone, but that's still a reasonable discount. Uh, plus, with the way they're doing the books now, you're getting more patterns each month with the way the book is set up. So you do have a little bit more um, value to it. You're not just getting your one pattern. You're getting, some, in some cases, four and five patterns each month, which that has a, an intrinsic value or a perceived value of about $20. So nitpicks, you know, you're, you're getting into that anywhere from 40 to 50% off zone. Uh, as I went through with the Jimmy Bean, you're actually barely breaking even in some cases with their boxes. This one, the total average, so like I said, I did the $75, which is always going to be a better value if you can just do a, because they're, it's a guaranteed sale for them. They don't have to put any more effort or work into creating the box for you. They already have a prepared number for those people. So for, for me, it's $75 uh, for three months. My total retail value over the course of the entire program was $99.33. I got 14 balls of yarn, three different styles, one hook, and three patterns, one of which was a free pattern that they already offered, but that's also the same month that I got the hook. So the value balanced itself out between the hook and the pattern. My total discount for the entire three months that I have been with them has been 24% off, which is a respectable sale price. My goal would be to see everything being 15 to 20% minimum, especially since you're taking the risk that you're not going to like the product you're given. The pattern is neither here nor there. Um, to me, it's, unless you're doing something like uh, the Knitting Skill Builder, which I know Becky over at Funny Farm Crochet does, um, your pattern really shouldn't matter that much, um, only because you're given enough quantity of yarn to complete more than one project potentially. One thing I did want to mention, I have not finished my cowl from last month and I have been working on it. I am almost done with the pink color change. I think I'm at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, I'm at row 29 of 42 for this color change, so I'm over halfway done. But I've completed the purple section. I know how much of that purple yarn I will use. And it used less than 50% of the ball. Um, so you may need to buy an extra skein of the white, which is the main color throughout this whole thing. And yes, my... Seam did get wonkademus. I'm not sure what happened there, but since there, I have managed to keep my seam all on the fold, and I've got a nice, beautiful seam there. But um, you might need to buy an extra skein of white, but for what you're getting, um, the amount of yarn you're getting, you could easily make two scarves out of the contrasting colors. Um, I will probably take these and do striped socks just because purple, pink, blue, and black will be the cuffs, toes, and heels. Uh, I think those would be fun and a lot of fun to make and a lot of fun to look at. But I am excited to be able to report back and at least show you that you're only using 
a little less than 25 grams of each contrasting color. Um, and to me, that's important because if you've got leftovers like that where you could complete an entirely different project with it for $25 a month, you're getting two projects worth of yarn, not one. And to me, that's pretty awesome. Um, the amount of yarn that I got with the dishcloths, um, Karen over at KB Fibers just did a shawl with the same yarn. And I was thinking, oh, that would be really nice. I was thinking more like tote bags, market bags. But I mean, for summer wear, I'm in a place where it's super hot. That cotton blend, cotton and linen blend, would make a really nice summer shawlette to just throw on to be covered for modesty, but not... Um, I really love the colors that that came in. It's very um, coastal and breezy feeling. So that might become a shawlette actually now. And even crocheted, it didn't feel heavy like some of the other cotton blends I've used in the past. Um, all in all, I would say I'm actually very happy with what I got, even though I wasn't thrilled with getting a dishcloth. I'm not a huge cowl wearer, but I do like this cowl. Um, like I said, when I did my unboxing a month too, you very easily could have made three or four pairs of socks out of that yarn. Um, three being 100 grams. Um, so... The potential in these kits, I think, is astronomical. Um, these are each 100 grams. I use 60 grams for my socks. If I wanted to do full-length socks, these very easily could make two pairs of socks. For me, this could be four pairs of socks almost. Um, if I did one super shorty where it was just barely ribbed before you started the foot, I could get four full pairs of socks out of this. Um... As far as crocheting with it, you know, I had never crocheted with Knit Picks fingering weight yarns until this project. And I have to say, they're very smooth to crochet with. And I did want to mention an oddity with the stroll fingering. Um, as you can see, it's super glitzy in the skein. You can... It doesn't pick up that much on the brighter colors on camera. But it's very glitzy and sparkly. One thing I like and other people might not like about the Stroll Glimmer is the Stellina in there is not, it's not a strand that's plied into it. It's almost like it's carded into the raw fiber and then spun into the yarn. Um, I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. It does create in your finished object, I don't know if it'll come up or not. You can see where like this sparkle is kind of off the project. It's not crocheted into the project, but it doesn't pill out. It doesn't fall out. Um, so kind of, it's almost like the Stellina is like the halo on Angora, fab, uh, Angora projects. So it's, uh, it was an interesting thing to work with. I own some of this. I've used the Stroll before. I had not used the Stroll Glimmer before. Um, but I do own other Stroll Glimmers. Um, so to me, that was very interesting. It also means if you have breaks in the Selena, because it's not a strand in there, you're not getting bare patches as you work with it. So it's... It's something for me was an interesting thing to note because I noticed it very heavily while crocheting with it. Because as you make the knots that are the crocheted stitches, it becomes more and more apparent. And it's more obvious the structure of the yarn versus when you're knitting with it. Um, knit stitches use up so little yarn, you really don't notice things like that sometimes when you knit. But when you crochet, you use a significantly longer piece of yarn per stitch, especially in a double crochet. Uh, I thought that was a very interesting thing, which I think actually makes the finished garment better because you don't end up with bald patches and you don't end up with the breaks in the Stellina that um, I noticed a couple other podcasters have mentioned other brands where you have where the Stellina has snapped, where the yarn stretches and the Stellina doesn't. And you end up with spots that become obvious they don't have sparkle in them. Um... With the Hawthorne, I have used a Hawthorne hand-painted to do a hat 
and scarf set before. I know this is a much more durable um, plied yarn. It's more densely plied. You can definitely see it even on camera how much more densely plied that is. But it's, oh, see that up against it, you can see that more tonal blue, blue, brown, black kind of, oh, so nice. Um, I've used it before. I think it holds up beautifully. It holds up very well to wash and wear. So as far as the yarns themselves that you're getting, I'm, yeah, I'm a huge nitpicks fan anyway. I already knew the yarn was going to not be a problem. I was curious more about the value per box and they are very true to their word. Every box has been a $30 retail value. Last month they were running a sale on what we got that was in between um, so mine was $25 a month. The, uh, sale price on everything that was in that box was $25.14. So you could have bought them on sale. Now this month the Hawthorne is not on sale, but it does go on sale. It is something, um, they rotate seasonally. So when they do their big clearance events, they tend to mark out the Hawthorne very heavily. Um, sometimes, you know, upwards of 70% off. So it is something to bear in mind if you want to use those yarns, but you don't want to wait for a sale or you're willing to wait for the clearance event, uh, you potentially could get the exact same products that you already have or would, were already be looking at. Um, I've got a couple, they're not sitting on the open shelf here. I wonder where, I think they're on the shelf over there. I think it's where I've got most of my Hawthorne. Um, I've got my fancy, the more hand painted things. And then I have my, um, more variegated -y, um, mass produced yarns over here for socks. Um, sorry, I am sitting on the floor. Uh, so I, all in all, I would say you, you're actually getting a fairly decent value. 20% off is a respectable amount to get off. Uh, anything above 15%, I think for a subscription box is, and these are their current season colors. These aren't, you know, yarns from last season that you can no longer purchase extra of. If you love them, these are the current seasons. When I was on this morning, um, both of these colors are low stock but they normally replenish at least once for things that are their seasonal color lines. Um, that is just my experience with nitpicks over the years. I have ordered for them repeatedly over the years. So um, all in all, I would have to say the Crochet Lovers box, I found the projects to be interesting. They're different. They're not the same projects you're seeing over and over and over again from everybody. They have some unique design elements. They have some unique ideas. Um, some have been variations on classics. Um, so I would definitely consider it if you're wanting to build your stash or experience. If you're where I was at a certain point where you're transitioning from everything being Red Heart to you're developing a fondness for natural fiber. I would definitely consider this a uh, box worth buying. Now, I also, nothing has been worsted weight because everything I've gotten has been geared more towards spring, summer months, which is another reason why I was considering maybe going an extra three months with this box. Uh, just personally, not as for the sake of review. Uh, I could always film an addendum, you know, what was my third month's haul, but, um, or second three months with it. Um, but everything was fingering weight or sport weight. I didn't have any of their bulky or their worsted weight in there. I have used them. Um, once again, the, the yarn quality itself, most of these are things I have used before or have used something from that line before. So, um, yeah, I, I, all in all, I knew what to expect when I got this one to begin with, but I am happy with the price value at $25 a month and what you're getting. I mean, 14 balls of yarn for $75 that all have a natural fiber 
is a fairly decent deal. So if you're in the process of building up and using more natural fibers, this would be a great way to, I mean, we've got a merino, a Highlands wool, and a cotton cotton linen blend that I got in this three months. Now the dishcloth box is always the first box. Even if you have been previously subscribed to the Crochet Lover and you're doing a new one, that is still going to be the first box you get if you were to resubscribe to them. So bear that in mind as well. Um, you will always have that box first. Um, your colors may vary, I suppose, but that is the first box that you're going to get when you subscribe. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the the price point was fine. I thought what I got was fine. I like the patterns, even though they're not necessarily even my style, like with the cowl or, you know, bobble dishcloths. They're not what I would necessarily want to do with the yarn. Um, I like the yarn itself. And to me, that's the most important part is the yarn and the notions you get with it. Now, Knit Picks does not, with the Crochet Lover box, do a lot of notions. Your first box does include a crochet hook. Um, and it was the Caspian, I think. And that, if you use a pencil grip, it's probably a great hook. For me, I am a knife hold person, so I'm a more all the way. It's just more comfortable for me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm debating. I've got a week where I can mentally negotiate if I want to roll my subscription over to a different one of their boxes and maybe experiment with some of the boxes that have um, more notions. I know the sock box comes with needles every month and stitch markers and things like that. Um, I know the one that Becky is doing tends to come with notions as well. Um, I think that one starts with a cable is the the knitting skill builder um i i would like some more information on some of their other boxes just to see i mean is the skill builder worth it um i'm not i i have been knitting for about 10 years but at the same time there are lots of things i haven't tried yet so it might be something that you know even i could find beneficial or as you're developing more skills you know just thinking about things differently. So I do want to experiment with some of their other boxes. So I've got a week to make that decision and uh, I will definitely come back. My next box is the Coco Bella Crochet System. Two videos in a row, my camera has totally shut itself down, gone out, lost its mind. Um, I did talk more than I wanted to in this video, but uh, I will be doing the Coco Bella Crochet Society box next. Um, I haven't received it. It should be on its way. I know the big reveal is on May 28th and they're trying to time that to where most of the people in the U.S. or Australia have already received their boxes. Um, but that will be my next three month review. So once again, nitpicks I thought was a thumbs up. Uh, I thought you got a good value. I thought you got an interesting combination of yarns. I may or may not continue going with them just to see, you know, what they offer as you transition more seasonally. They do seem to do a good job, though, at being seasonally appropriate. So for me, that is actually a huge pro because of the dramatic difference between our temperatures from February 1st to August 1st. We are currently already sitting at heat indexes of 100 degrees right now. So this color is from just going out for 15 minutes at a time to get mail or go to the car. Uh, so having things that are geared towards more seasonally appropriate projects for me is also a huge bonus. Um, other than that, I would love to see questions down below uh, pertaining to this box or if you have a suggestion for another box, let me know. Uh, the Coco Bella box will be the last box that I do out of this house. Um, I will hopefully be able to switch my mailing address when we do have a new house picked. Um, so, you know, bear in mind, it's going to be May, June, July with Coco Bella. I might skip August for the move and pick up September with a new box. So, um, bear in mind, we will be moving, a, it will be a little while before I can get to 
any suggestions that you have down below. But like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell your friends. I don't know. Uh, do what you, do what you will with my with my information here. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, wonderful weekend. I'm not sure when I'm going to be uploading this video yet. Um, but uh, in my show and tells, you'll see finished objects as they come through, left over from this kit. But I can already tell you how I feel about the purchase prices and everything else. So I am, I'm not going to come back and do a fourth video of a final recap of the nitpicks box. I'm going to let this unboxing serve, serve its purpose, mostly because I was already pretty familiar with everything. But if you are curious as to how I feel about my finished uh, shawl, or the finished cowl, or what I decide to do with the cut linen blend, um, you know, continue watching my show and tell videos, and over the next couple months, you will definitely see those projects being finished. Take care. I will see you guys real soon. I hope I didn't bore you too much, and uh, I will come back on the review stuff as soon as I have my Crochet Society box. Bye, you guys.